different animal, and it's a it's a um, you know it's going to require some creative thinking. I'm sure you have a few. I think there's enough things in the world that we don't know, and we we're going to make mistakes about the things that we can't see and we don't know. But if we have a map of a cave system that we know that that is a location in which there's been directly to the springs, I think we need to be very particular about how we, what we do around that. Uh, you know, and I'm not going, I'm not suggesting we go out and just be everything because there's plenty we don't know and we, you know, I know we're going to make mistakes, but let's don't make the mistakes where we can make a change or we can make something different. Wasn't it at PCS or one of those one of the prostate uh, area that they had a big collapse and it turned out to be a huge mm -hmm. cabinet system below it <coughs> in their yeah. basin? A year and a half or so ago. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, <coughs> what you were saying earlier, the dry fertilizer is the uh, most likely to have the runoff and the <coughs> nutrient impacts on the water body, correct? That is, yes. And the fertigation, which is some sort of spray application. It's a, it's a liquid fertilizer applied through, through the uh, irrigation center pivots. Has the least amount of potential for? And so much less potential for that, the least, but you know, maybe. I, I, would, I would hate to say the least because I could quite honestly be wrong, but I know it's a significant well, improvement. And it would be. It, the, the, the deal is you're applying less because the, the grower is going to run his pivot just as much as he needs to. If he's running it correctly, he's not going beyond the root zone. He's not over fertilizing. Right. So now, I understand the concept. I'm, yeah. just, I'm, I'm actually laying this a predicate for my actual okay. question. <laughs> <laughs> you are a attorney. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so that's the less impactful. Right. It would be fair to say that our cave divers are the only ones that have done accurate mapping. Yes, yes. It'd be fair to say that less than 1% of our probable cave systems are mapped. Is that a good, is that a good number? Okay. I'd say less than that. that. Yeah. Okay, less than 1%. So if we were to look at options, and I agree with the chairman, that you look at what you know and you try to adjust for that, and if it's less than 1%, then a cost share on less than 1% would probably be something that would be approachable and that as cave divers or districts map out further it gives very incremental <coughs> cost increase to the district to help implement things that uh, you know, can keep the nutrients down now I know the words cost share and metering have been um, been getting people's hackles up lately I'm not suggesting it, but if if we were to do things like that, it, what we actually know is small enough right now that be implemented or uh, approach on very, very minuscule scale and then scaled up as we learn more, which evidently we have no program in place to further map you know, uh, with divers. In. I'm glad our council walked in the room because I've got a, <laughs> I got a question. You know, normally, Tom, we can't approach anything until we have some re <coughs> region <coughs> to look at it like an application. But, and I'm not beating up on you, I just happened to see that map that Ms. Long left us the other day. And I didn't know that's what was, what was going on there, and I didn't, I, anyway. But we just take that as, as it is. Would it be, um, would, would we be overstepping our bounds to go to that property owner and say, we need to tell you something, this is part of a property that has been underground cave map. We know that there's a fence here. We know that there, there's certain things <coughs> going on here that, that we could have some issues with. Before you go spend a tremendous amount of money, let's, let's have some conversation uh, about what you're going to do here and let's, let's work through this to the best that we can come up with. 
Is that is that something that's logical, or is that overstepping some legal definition of what we can do? You're saying before they file a permit? Yeah, I mean, just the, sure. We just see that a guy's out there clearing a piece of property, and and we you know we know that there's a there's some underground structure under there that we are concerned about that maybe he doesn't even know about. I have no idea. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with the district um, approaching that landowner saying this is our our best uh, information is that there's that this is going on under your property, this is the cave system, this is whatever, and we would like to offer, you know, our assistance and working through, you know, a plan or whatever you would like. I don't think there's any, any problem with that. Um, I don't, I'm just more like to get more proactive up front to try to keep a, a a big issue down than I had it all of a sudden you know some guy spent millions of dollars and, I, and then you know we said we're in a, a contest between each other. Sure. Um, the, the only thing I might, uh, I, no, I, the, but the short answer is no, I don't think there's a problem. Um, the only thing I might suggest is that, that it, you, you would approach that in some methodical way. You wouldn't want it to be where well, we're uh, playing favorites with this part of the district and We've mapped out all their caves and we've given them this advice, but hadn't done anything for the other part. And I'm not saying you got to treat everybody the same, but make it part of some plan that you, um, that, that how the district's going to approach it, uh, where it's, it, it doesn't lend itself to someone saying it was arbitrary that we helped certain people in certain areas. That'd be my only suggestion. But I don't think there's anything wrong with, you being pro with the district being proactive and doing that. Mr. Chairman, the petroleum industry has had some pretty innovative. Uh, Processes now for mapping, you know, subsurface areas too. You might be willing to share. They have a pretty big budget too. <laughs> I was thinking they that. sneeze our annual budget. Anyway, you know, it may be, you know, there may be others, and I don't want to pick on any particular. I just happen to see that, you know, but that may be something we need to address with. You know, um, beforehand, and let's find out what really is happening here, and because we do have maybe do have a concern that we need to talk about. I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about this, trying to come at it from a little different direction. Um, I wonder if if we, as a, a state, um, could could try to incentivize a couple of initiatives from a technology standpoint that would help us. For instance, if, if we could get some smart folks in our universities to think about how can you cap characterize our karst geology such that it could be modeled. And you know, I'm thinking of infrared from space or sonic stuff or you know, some of the stuff that was talked about from the petroleum industry. Right. I mean, that's a big deal but it would have a big payoff if we had an accurate model in a lot of different ways, not just the nutrient flow. Uh, so maybe trying to incentivize some good thinking from that standpoint and how we would improve our model to be really accurate. And then the second thing is, I'm about as far from a chemist as you can get, but it seems like if, if we've got nutrients flowing through the groundwater into the rivers, maybe we we'll have somebody looking at what chemically can you do to counteract that? So, okay, maybe it's gonna go in, but maybe you can either put some other stuff through the central system that won't harm the crops, or come to my place and throw something in the spring that'll help neutralize it, and, you know, do that generally. Is there a chemical approach to solving the problem that we can't, we don't wanna step on people's individual rights to how they handle their own property? You know, I don't, I'm just trying to think off the wall about other approaches to, in the long term, how we might deal with that. Do you guys, I don't know if you address this to maybe, maybe, uh, maybe John, but maybe uh, Steve, I don't know. Do we ever actually have a sit down occasionally with, with IPAS and say, you know, we want to give you some, some issues within our district that we would like for you to do some research on, uh, if, if at all possible. And, ha and 
have some dialogue with these folks and tell them what the issues are. And, and I mean, I think there's, uh, there's ag communities that would be glad to help fund some of these kinds of things that would help us in the long run. But if they, if, I just wonder if our research community knows our issues, if, you know, and they really got a good grip on them. And do they, if they have these conversations like we're having here today and like and, and Carl just expressed, it, that gives them some food for thought. Um, I'll tell you something else that, that we did ministry. I mean, between us and DEP, you know, if we set aside two, three hundred thousand dollars or half a million dollars and, and pointed it toward a specific item and said we're willing to fund some graduate research, you can get some people's attention with not a whole lot of money in today's. Oh, I, I agree, and I think that that's you know that's kind of like DEP's BMAP money. I mean, I think that us or legislator or whoever we could, if they had the right uh, research, you know that would solve some issues that we have in our district, that would be that would be money well spent, uh, you know, to help them uh, do that research. I, I just wonder if we'd have in that dialogue. We didn't, That's probably a no. Well, <laughs> the karst mapping modeling piece, not with uh, ISIS so much, uh, they were included in our SRP but I was sitting. I was thinking. I just from the standpoint of we we got a nutrient problem. Okay, here's show them this and say, you know, what kind of research? What could we do? Can can we have some of your guys do a think tank and then think about you know options that we may have that you, we may could do some research on to, to mitigate some of our problems? I'll tell you who I would have. I mean, I had this conversation with Dr. Wendy Graham, who's the head of the Water Institute. Mm -hmm. um, I spent all day on Friday with her and, and, but see, and I think those are the wrong people personally she's like this well she's I understand I, I don't mean that I don't mean has. that but I mean it's if you have to get to the people you've got to change the way that the farmer I'll say without a better is doing business and we've got to give them good reasons to and, and I and I you know we and it needs to fit within their you know, within their livelihood and, and make sense. And I think, it, you know, is it a chemical problem? Is, is there something else? Can we develop a new, uh, can we use more organic nitrates that would cause less problems? Well, you know, I don't know what the answer is, but I think there's a lot of smart people need to be thinking uh, along these lines. Um, and, I, and I know the water, I'm just saying, I'm not saying don't have those conversations with folks, but I think to really get something done, you got to back up to the source. And that's where you have to start to concern. Because you can't go forward from there and, and really get anything done. You gotta back up and get these people engaged to, to make a change. Just so you know, sir, there um, some of the stuff that's ongoing right now in, in conjunction with ISIS and DEP, we're working up at Swanee Farms, which um, we're talking about from uh, US ISIS. You know, is doing a lot of work on on nutrient transport and pick up by the crops to try. You know, this is this is one of the big issues we have. You know, in the in the system, is we don't really know when to apply X. You know, at what time do you need to apply X? And the crop uses, let's say, a half X. You know, then half of that X is, is goes into the system. Well, you know, to the to the grower, he just wasted half his money because you know he's not. It's no use. He might as well throw money on the ground. So trying to trying to deliver, and that's kind of ties back into the fertigation thing. Trying to deliver the optimum, the optimum quantity at the optimum time for the appropriate crop, and that you know that changes by crop, you know, which changes throughout the year. But there are there are efforts going on along those lines. We're also and there's been a lots of research done there, and right. I and I think we've made some tremendous strides. Yes. I mean, if you look at the amount of fertilization, we, we and that's <coughs> where where we debated. If you look at the amount of fertilizer that was used in this district versus now, we've definitely come down. We've right. definitely got better technology. I mean, we, we're doing better. Right. I just think we need to look at other alternatives too, all, you know, that may help us with this. Because I don't think, there's not going to be one silver bullet that, you know, all of a sudden we find and this is going to fix it all. So, and, and we're also working down in the, uh, on the south side of the Santa Fe the project where we're installing uh, real-time uh, rainfall monitors so that we can relate 
rainfall and essentially like in storm water, the 